In this video, we'll talk about how bits can be grouped into bytes, words, and other quantities. And we'll also mention octal notation. Here is a quantity that is one bit in size. A memory this big can hold either a zero or a one, and nothing more. The major grouping of bits is the byte. There are eight bits in a byte. So a memory with only one byte would have eight bits in it. Most memories have many, many bytes, but each one of those bytes has exactly eight bits in it. The byte is a very common measure of how large a memory is, and every byte contains eight bits. There are some other units that are important. Uh, the next most important is the word. A word is four bytes, and since there are eight bits in every byte, a word has 32 bits. So a word is four bytes, and here I've drawn out 32 bit positions. We can also talk about a 16 bit quantity. That's also a very common measure of size. And a 16 bit quantity is called a half word, sometimes also called a short value. And uh, we also have a double word, which is twice as big as a word, 8 bytes, or 64 bits. And then we have quad words, which are 16 bytes in length. Now, these terminolo this terminology is getting to be pretty standard. Certainly, byte, a byte having 8 bits is very standard and agreed upon. But the, the term word is not 100% agreed upon. Generally, it means 4 bytes, and that is the proper meaning for this term. But in some contexts, particularly uh, older uh, material, word may mean a different amount of bits or bytes. Uh, in older uh, microprocessors, they use the term word for 16 bits. That's very confusing. So we should always talk about a word being 4 bytes or 32 bits in length. Anything else is just asking for confusion. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between hexadecimal notation and binary notation. So here's a binary number, 00111010100111. And here is the equivalent number expressed in hex, 3A0F. Computer memories contain bits uh, and bytes which are made of bits. So you could specify what's stored in a computer memory using binary notation. However, it's very error prone for the human brain because of all these zeros and ones. So generally, we use the hex notation instead to express what's stored in memory. So the computer actually can be thought of as a binary storage system that stores bits, but it's much more practical to think about the computer memory as storing numbers that are represented in hex, since there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So let's look at a byte. A byte has eight bits in it. Okay, so here's an example, 00111010. So perhaps one byte in your, mem in your computer's memory contains this value. It's much simpler to express the value that's stored in that byte with two hex digits, two hex numerals, 3a. Since there are eight bits, it requires two hex digits to describe the contents of that byte of memory. So remember, each byte is expressed with two hex digits. So if you see a hex number and you wonder how many bytes it is, you can just look at how many hex digits there are in it. In this case, there are four hex digits, two per byte, so there are two bytes here, two bytes or 16 bits. Another way to look at it is if you see four hex digits, each one represents four bits. So this corresponds to 0011101011011. Half words, which are 16 bits in length, take four hex digits. 
Hex digits generally come in pairs. Always write them in pairs because we very rarely see anything smaller than a byte. There's a term uh, for a 4-bit unit called a nibble, which is half a byte, a nibble, uh, but that's more of a cute term and not particularly used by anybody uh, for anything uh, serious. So uh, here we have 3A0F for a half word. And finally we have a word which is 32 bits. Most computers work on 32 bits and many modern computers work on 64-bit groups, double words, but the word size of 32 bits is very common and it requires eight hex digits. Eight times four is 32 bits. And with decimal numbers, we oftentimes write a comma every after every third digit. With uh, binary numbers, we oftentimes write a space. So a typical um, decimal number might be something like this with a comma every three. Now let's, Maybe we can add a little bit more, okay? With hex numbers, um, the standard is to put the um, break every um, fourth digit. So let's take our number 3A0F12D8. Uh, we could, sometimes we put commas there, okay? But uh, more frequently we, we put a space there. Um, sometimes when you've got a lot of hex digits, you might just uh, break it apart by drawing lines between them to sort it out. Um, you can draw a line every two for every byte if you prefer. So this is one word, four bytes. Okay. So here's our example, 3A0F, and I've drawn a space there to break it apart so that you can identify it as a word and not get lost uh, in there. Here is our correspondence between hex numerals and groups of four bits. So this you should commit to memory. 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4 is 1, 0, 0, 5 is 101, 6 is 110, and 7 is 111. And then we have the numbers that are greater than 7 begin with a 1, 8, 9A is 1010, B, C is 1100, D, E, and the last one, F, is all ones. I want to mention octal notation, although octal notation is not used very much anymore. It's more for historical interest. Here I have a half word, two bytes, 16 bits, 1101, 0100, 1011001001 and there's a nice correspondence in each of these groups of four with a hex numeral. Octal is base eight, okay? So they only use eight numerals from zero through seven. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the numerals and three bits. So, for example, this 16-bit this binary number, which is D, 4, B, 1, can be expressed in octal by um, looking at it as 1, 5, 2, 2, 6, 1. Octal groups the bits into groups of three. Hex groups the bits into groups of four. Since bytes have eight bits, grouping them into groups of four makes a lot of sense because there are exactly two hex digits per byte. So this half word could be expressed with one, two, three, four hex digits. The octal notation doesn't work so well because, as you can see, when you group it into groups of three, one spans the byte. One of these groups spans the byte, uh, the byte boundary. Also, octal numbers tend to have a lot of digits, okay? S because they have fewer numerals, the numbers get longer, 
more quickly. And so octal is basically just a bad idea. It's, it's not used very often. Um, another thing that is uh, somewhat problematic is every octal number looks like a decimal number. So if you make a number using only these numerals, it looks like a perfectly valid number, but it's not. If you say, for example, 263, and you're interpreting it as an octal number, uh, it's not 263. In fact, it's only 179 in decimal. Um, 263 also looks like a hex number. Um, and if you interpret it as a hex number, it's actually a much larger uh, decimal value. So you can see you can get larger numbers uh, with fewer, fewer digits uh, with the hex notation. Um, in the C programming language, a leading zero indicates that the rest of the number is in octal. So if you see a number and it starts with a zero, that means it's, an, it's expressed in octal and not decimal. Normally, in math, leading zeros are insignificant. And so this leading zero is oftentimes uh, a bit confusing because leading zeros are supposed to be not significant. But if you add a zero in front of the digits 2, 6, and 3, you change the number from being a decimal number of 263 into the octal number, which has a value of only 179. So that's octal notation, used uh, rarely anymore, but I just want you to be aware of it. As long as we're talking about C, this is probably a good time to talk about how many bytes are used to represent numbers in the C programming language. There are essentially two versions of C in use on the Intel microprocessor. Intel's power most of the computers uh, these days at this time. And the older Intel processors are 32-bit processors, and the newer ones are 64-bit processors. This term, this, this term IE32 refers to the 32-bit architecture. And x86-64 is how we refer to the 64-bit architecture. In the C language, you have a number of different kinds of numbers. And uh, the primary workhorse is the int, which is a 32-bit number. It's four bytes. In addition, we have a short number, which is a half word. Okay, And then we have cares or chars. Some people say chars, some say cares. Those are just one byte numbers, eight bits of information. There is also a, a longer version of uh, integers. Uh, and in the C language, you can write that data type as either long or long long. Those are two different data types. Uh, I recommend you never use long because on the Intel, on some compilers, uh, it means four bytes, and on others it means eight. Whereas long, long pretty generally means an eight byte number, a double word number. We also have floating point numbers. I'm gonna talk about how uh, numbers are represented a little bit more in the subsequent videos. And I'll also talk about how floating point numbers are represented, which is a subject all unto itself. So right now we're talking only about integers, and the standard representation of an integer is 32 bits, which is four bytes. There are also versions that are eight bytes, two bytes, and one byte. In addition, we have ways to represent numbers in scientific notation. That's called floating point. And there are two different, there are primarily two different precisions, one, with four, one using four bytes and one using eight bytes. There's also uh, an extended precision or a long precision that involves 16 bytes. Uh, we'll talk about pointers in this video series later on as well. And this notation care star here is indicating a pointer. And it can be a pointer to characters or anything else. And the two different architectures use either 4 bytes or 8 bytes for pointers. I should also point out that these are the names we typically use for these types. but um, short can be expanded and you can also write short int which means this type a half word and not a full word and in place of long you can write long int which means 
uh, well, it, its meaning depends on which uh, compiler you're using for which machine. And then long long can also be written out as long long int, although this is less common.